everybody, it's Miss Morrow from College Street Elementary and we are in our game room slash garage because we're working from home and today I'm going to show you how you can make do-it-yourself base tin blocks so that you and your kids can do some place value games in addition and subtraction games at home. So we're going to switch the screen on our video and we are going to raise this up so that you can see the space that I'm working with. Now, when we are at school, we use blocks that look like these. And these are called base 10 blocks. And we use these little ones for our ones. And first grade starts using ones and tens. So these are our tens. And you can see that if I count 10 ones, they perfectly line up to make one ten. So we learned that 10 ones and one ten are the same thing. But it's much easier for me to pick this up than it is for me to pick, oh no, pick all of, the, pick all of those up. So then we talk about ones and tens. And then as kids get into second grade, we add hundreds and so we start dealing with ones tens and hundreds and second grade even uses these great big blocks called thousands and then third grade will still use base 10 blocks for addition and subtraction but in place value they go up to 100,000 so they stop using the base 10 blocks when they get into their 100,000s they still use them for some place value and for a lot of addition and subtraction but I'm guessing that you do not have these base 10 blocks just hanging out at your house. That's not something that most people just stock up on. So today I'm going to show you some ideas of things you can do at home to make your own base 10 blocks. Now I am using popsicle sticks because I had this big thing of popsicle sticks left over from crafting things and making things. So you can use popsicle sticks. You can use straws. You can use spaghetti. Basically anything that's long and skinny, that is going to be our substitute for a tin. Kind of looks like a tin, okay? And then for our ones, I needed something small to represent my little ones. So I am using shells and cheese. I'm using the shells from the shells and cheese. So you could use Cheerios, you could use beans, you could use, so I saw somebody take a straw and cut it up into pieces, you could do that. But basically you just want something small that's going to represent your ones. So my popsicle sticks are gonna be my tens, and my dried shells and cheese are gonna be my ones. And now I need something to represent my tens. Now what I like about using the popsicle sticks is I can put 10 of them together and then tape them on the back. I use painter's tape because that's what I had at home. And now I have a 100. I've seen people draw their 100. They just took paper and cut big squares out of their paper and made that be their 100s. You can do that too. Or you can use rubber bands and you can bundle your 10s together and make a bundle of 10 tens so that shows that you have your 100s so all of those are really good ideas okay so what are some things that we can do with our homemade base 10 blocks well if you are in kindergarten or first grade you can make a place value chart with tens and ones and then you can play a game against your parents now in a previous video, we talked about using cards and dice as a way to build things. So we are not gonna use our Jack, Queens, and Kings. We're not using our face cards. Our aces are gonna be worth one, okay? And so when I deal, I'm gonna play against my partner. I dealt a number, whoops, a joker snuck in there. So I'm making a number, and then my partner's gonna make a number. There's that other joker. He's a sneaky joker, isn't he? So I made a number and my partner made a number, maybe it's your parent, and I'm gonna build my number with base 10 and my partner's going to build their number with base 10. So my number had four tens 
and three ones. So there's my three ones, and there's my four tens. So my number is 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43. I built the number 43. And when my partner builds their number, they're going to have built the number 82. I sure do wish they had built that number because then that means my number would be bigger. But they didn't. They built 82. And that means they would have won that round. So you can build numbers with your base 10 mat. If you're in second grade, using those same numbers, you could add your 10s and 1s. Also, second graders, your hundreds chart, you can make a place value chart that had ones, tens, and hundreds if you're going to be adding and subtracting. First grade makes numbers for place value that go up to 120. So if you're working with a first grader, the biggest number they're going to build is 120 on their place value map. That's as high as first grade goes. If you're a second grader or a third grader and you're building numbers or you're adding and subtracting numbers, you might want to fold your paper so that it's folded into fourths. And then you can make thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones on your place value chart. And you can do the same kind of game. You can build numbers. I drew an ace. So that's 1,000. 500, oh, another five, five tens, and another one. How interesting. So I have 1,551, and I could build that with my homemade base 10 blocks. Now, for my thousands, I've got a couple of ideas because, again, I don't think any of you guys are wandering around with a thousand block at your house. So I found this sandwich container that I could use to be my thousand block. But I also was looking in the refrigerator and I happened to have a container of blackberries. And that shape kind of reminded me of a thousand block. So you just want something that's like a cube type shape or rectangular prism type shape that you can use as your thousand. Also, this comes in handy because then it can hold all of your materials and supplies for the next time you're doing play style. Now, second grade and third grade can also use this chart to show adding and subtracting numbers. And this is especially important when we get into regrouping because we want to show that that regrouping process happens because we're swapping tens or ones or ones and hundreds. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say I have the number 321 and I want to subtract the number 94. So I have three hundreds, so I need three hundreds. There's one, two, and I did not make another one hundred. So I'm going to use one of my school hundreds for this demonstration. I have three hundreds and I have two tens. I want you to be able to see my place value box and my numbers. So I'm going to scooch that up a little bit two tens and in this demonstration I had one one and we know that I need to take away subtract four ones from my one one but I only have one so using my base ten blocks I can model that that one ten is the same thing as 10 ones, just like I did with my base 10 blocks earlier. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of my ones, and I'm going to replace that one ten. I'm gonna put it over here with 10 ones. And by regrouping those numbers, now I only have one ten left. So I've regrouped and I have one ten left. And instead of one one, I added 10 more. So now I have 11 ones. And I can take four away from that 11. And let's count and see how many that leaves us with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That left me with seven ones. 
Now I'm at my tens. I want to take away nine tens and subtract that, but I only have one ten. So that's where I'm going to have to regroup my hundred. So my hundred's going away. I should have built more out of popsicle sticks. And I'm going to exchange that for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I get 10 tens for that 100. Oh, I forgot. I had done the bundles. I could have done that instead of the school one. Oh, well. So I replaced that. They all go there. And now I only have two 100s left. See my two homemade 100s? And I have 11 tens. When I take 9 away from that 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that leaves me with just 2. And I have 2 hundreds. So you can use your base 10 blocks to model the addition and subtraction that you're doing on your place value chart. Another thing that you can do with your base 10 blocks is you can make what teachers call a Frayer model. Frayer model is a really fancy word for we just took a piece of paper and divided it into four sections with one in the middle, so five sections. And I'm going to show you how you can fold your paper to look like this. Teachers love a good Frayer model. I don't know why. It is true. You can use them for science. They're just a good way to organize all of your things. So we're going to take a blank sheet of paper and we're going to create our own Frayer model. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to fold it in half. I started by folding it in half vertically. And then I'm going to fold it in half. And that's a horizontal fold. So I did it in half, and I did it in half again. And I want to find the corner where the two folds are. You see that corner? So that one fold is next to that two folds. I don't want a corner where any of my paper is open. So I'm not using those corners. I want the corner where my folds are. And I'm going to take that corner and fold it like a triangle. See how I did that? So when I unfold this, I get all of those parts. And I have my piece in the middle. That's my square in the middle. I know it looks like a rhombus, but you'll notice that it's really a square. It was just tilted on its axis. So I have my, romp my square in the middle. And I'm going to do all of my parts coming out from that. And you can do anything with this that you want to do with it. You could roll your two numbers, or we're using a deck of cards, so we could generate our two numbers here. So I have 49, and I also have, oops, I drew a 10. Well, I can use a 10 because I can make it a 100 number. I have 106. So I could write my numbers in the middle. I had 49 and 106. And you could show those numbers with their place value. So I have 49 and 106. 49 is four tens and nine ones. 106 is, oh, look at that, 10 tens. I'm going to show you another way you can write that. And six ones, or I could say it's 100 zero tens and six ones. I went inside my other space, that's okay. So I could say this is 10 tens because we remember earlier we talked about how 100 is 10 tens. Or I could say it's 100 and zero tens. So I could talk about the place value of the numbers. 
I could add the two numbers together and show my work over here. I could subtract those two numbers. I could write those numbers in their expanded form and show the addition and subtraction with their expanded form. So 49 would be 40 and 9 and 106 would be 100 plus 0 10, so zeros there, and 6 ones. And so I can show my addition and subtraction that way. I do want to make sure that if I'm showing my subtraction, my second graders and third graders haven't yet learned how to work with negative numbers. So if we're subtracting these, we want to make sure we write that bigger number first so that we can subtract the smaller number. And you could show those parts with that subtraction. That would have some interesting regrouping on that one. That's one thing you could do. Another Freyer model, this is one that we use in the classroom a lot, is just by building one number. So I'm going to use my deck of cards and I'm going to generate one number. Oh, this is a good kindergarten and first grade number. I have a one and a three. So when I write that in standard form, that's the number right there. When I draw that picture with base 10 blocks, I can show it with my base 10 blocks. That's one 10 and three ones. And I want to record my picture. So I'm going to draw one 10 and three ones. We also use something called place value disks in school. And our place value disks are just circles. You can trace a quarter, you can draw circles. And I have one that's worth a 10. And then I would need three circles that were my ones. So that's how I would use my place value disks to show 13. I could show this on a number line. I'm gonna jump 10 and then jump three ones to show that I can land on 13. And I can write this number in expanded form. 10 plus three equals 13. So again, if you're in first grade, you're just going to do this sprayer model using two cards. You're going to be doing two digit numbers. If you're in second grade, you can use three digit numbers or you could go up to four digits um, as long as you don't go past 1,200. And third grade, you can go all the way up to 999,999. So you can go up to the hundred thousands. So using our homemade place value blocks, our do-it-yourself place value blocks, you can play games on a place value chart. You can do games using a Freyer model. You can do place value type games, or you can do addition and subtraction type games. Hope this gives you a lot of ideas for things you can do at home. See you later.